Oh boy, if you didn't catch that last presidential debate, you must be living under a rock. And I'm going to go against the grain here. I'm going to say things that other people have not said on the interwebs. Trump absolutely wiped the floor with Kamala. I don't care what the media has to say. I don't care what those doomers on Twitter have to say. Kamala got smoked by Trump. There's no way around it. There's no, there's no other situation. You know, I mean, I'm not a man to count his eggs before they've hatched. So there's no guarantee that Trump wins this election. I'll say that. But the only two things that can stop him at this point are how many people are actually still brainwashed by the mainstream media and how much they've uh, skewed the system tilted the table in their favor, right? That could still win out, theoretically. If Kamala wins, it will be because the game was already rigged. Not because anyone wants to say what she had to hear or wants another four years of this mess or was moved by how joyful she is, but because there are enough people who are sick, sad mutants in this country that they will vote against Donald Trump because the media told him to do so. I, look, look, I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris. She could run over a child live on TV. I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris. I'm never going to vote for Trump. But That's the, gnarly. But the fact is, even though I think she'll make a good president, she's not a good candidate. If you remember from when she ran before, she, she tends to get real irritated with stuff she doesn't like. She's not real fast on her feet. Maybe she's better now. but live events, things like that, I don't know, man. I don't think she's going to do so well in the debate. This is what you're up against. A million dudes like that guy. But anyway, they had to skew things. They had to go and concoct a bunch of new big lies that Trump is telling. He's a big liar about all the stuff that's going on in Ohio right now with, the, with some uh, 20,000 Haitian immigrants that were suddenly moved there overnight out of nowhere. So there's been a lot of allegations of animals going missing, you know, ducks being basically yes, sir. taken. Yes, sir. There's pictures of that, too. Can you speak on that? Have you ever seen that in person? I had, No, I, I've i seen, the only thing I've seen, I did see a pig's head laying down in Snyder Park. You saw a pig's head? A pig's head. Like it had been cut off? Or? Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's, you don't really see that every day, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of surprising. Wow. But then... Our city wants to pass it off as cult stuff. As cult stuff? Yeah. Does, do you think that has anything to do with, you know, like the connections with voodoo that Haitians commonly have? I mean, in Haiti, well, it's a there's very actually, commonly practiced thing. I'm sorry. There's actually been a couple um, people that I know that have been told that they were going to be cursed by voodoo. By Haitians? By Haitians. So that actually is a real thing here. Yes. And them practicing voodoo with animals, yes. pig's head. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You gotta understand that personally, this is a very hard position for me to take because I'm very anti-pig and then also very pro-curse. But this is sadly the position that this country has come to. That's, uh, <laughs> you don't hear that every day. That's crazy. <laughs> How long have you been a resident of Springfield, Ohio? My entire 58 years. Your entire 58 years. Yes, so sir. You don't look a day over 20, okay? <laughs> um, so Thanks. <laughs> how would you describe what's going on here in Springfield? What are your concerns? What brings you out to City Hall today? My concerns are security, mostly for the women in this town, the young girls. Um, I've been accosted. I've been groped. I've been followed. I don't leave my house unless I'm armed and have my pit bull. Man, the rest of that video, probably too spicy for this website, but you know what's really going on. The country's in a terrible state, everyone knows it, everyone hates it, everyone's aware, and it's gotten so bad that the moderators were trying to trip up Trump in the most obvious way possible. Because I'm telling you, this situation was so bad, Dr. Phil, Mr. Centrist, Inoffensive, most moderate of moderate, if you can even call it conservatives, Dr. Phil, was on his show acknowledging that ABC did a disservice to Trump, that they did not treat him fairly. Was there bias by the moderators today 
well, in, I, in y'all's opinion? Let's just look at body language. Look at the facial expressions of people when they're looking at Trump. There was clearly a bias against Trump in, in their faces. Let's take my other opinion. This is all my opinion. There's a little bit of a thumb on the scale when you ask one person two questions in a row as the primary question, and it's a softball question. That feels like bias to me. I would challenge them to tell me why that's not biased if I were in his situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the same time, we're seeing the uh, commentators, they would be uh, speaking at the same time President Trump was. So as he's trying to finish his answer, they would keep, they would not only answer, they would keep talking as well. And you can tell, and I believe if I'm correct here, the volume of his microphone might have been a little bit hotter than everybody else's. That's why he sounded so loud. He was speaking loudly, but I think you'll, you'll uh, hear this when you listen back and forth. This is my opinion. That, well, let me well, remind everybody that Scott's a Grammy-nominated music producer, so yeah. he knows a little so, bit about sound. So I pay attention to that stuff a little bit. <laughs> this is a known thing in debates between male and female politicians, that a male debating against a woman will appear more aggressive and then actually sort of lose the sympathy of the audience. The female politician will have more sympathy from the audience based on the fact that uh, it seems like there's this big, strong, aggressive man kind of bullying her. And I think that's precisely what they attempted to do, what ABC attempted to do with this debate. Now think about how precarious that is. Kamala was trying to project strength the whole time. That's what they were trying to do. That's what the media tried to hype us up for. Oh man, she's a prosecutor. Even though she like barely ever actually did any real prosecuting. She's a prosecutor. She's going to be so tough on him. You know, she's, she's going to, she's going to get to the core. She's going to expose to the American people all the bad things this mean man Trump has done. Bro, earlier this year, earlier this year, was there another candidate who was going to run against Trump a second time, but dropped out? Someone refresh my memory. Someone remind me. Was it the Crypt Keeper? Was Trump running against the Crypt Keeper, but the Crypt Keeper had to drop out? Yeah, this is how hard the system has to try in order to suppress us. Now, I saw some of you. You know who you are. You have little faith. Starting to believe what the media is saying now, that Kamala has the edge because she quote-unquote won this debate. She didn't say anything that anyone hasn't already heard before. People's minds have already been made up. The writing's already on the wall for this one. I don't think that this debate really changed anything. I think the media has used the fact that Kamala slightly outperformed expectations in the sense that she's usually this incoherent, babbling, cackling mess, and she was, seemed, appeared able to string sentences. That was really kind of the first thing in 2022, uh, why people said that Trump lost, is because... Uh, the right had already been saying that Joe Biden was senile, and then for that one debate, he didn't appear senile. So that's why he said, uh, so that's why the media used that as an excuse to say that Joe Biden won. This time, Kamala didn't seem like a complete crone, a complete incoherent crone. So people said that she won. And some of you fell for it. Some of you were taken in by the lie, and I understand the media apparatus is powerful. There are a lot of disinformation agents out there, but stay the course, you know, get a grip. And I do think that the right standards have gotten a little bit high, if you know what I mean. Like, it's very hard to beat the Joe Biden debate. That was so bad. They literally, he literally had to drop out. He had to drop out because of how poorly he performed in that debate, how obviously senile he was. And it's kind of hard to top that. So, of course, this is not... This whole debate with Kamala is not going to have the same emotional impact. But personally, I know that I wasn't going to feel any kind of true satisfaction from the debate unless Trump brought up the fact to her face that she sucked her way to the top. Like, I, and, and made her cry in front of the entire country. Like, that is the only cherry on top that I would have accepted to be like, man, you know, that would have really set my heart at ease. Because that's what America needed to hear and needed to see. That this woman's a fraud and she's also a 304. But when I was watching this debate, I was like, even for your average mush for brains voter who would even consider voting for Kamala, it has to be super duper clear 
that the moderators are very biased against Trump. Like they're it's worse than 2020. It's worse than ever before, really. Like this is very this felt very clear. They almost felt like they were sort of like tripping over themselves to kind of apologize for it at the same time, too. Had a very surreal, surreal feel. Nancy Pelosi was responsible. She didn't do her job. The question was about you as president, not about former Speaker Pelosi. But I do want Vice President Harris to respond here. I was at the Capitol on January 6th. I was the vice president elect. I was also an acting senator. I was there. And on that day, the president of the United States incited a violent mob to attack our nation's capital, to desecrate our nation's capital. On that day, 140 law enforcement officers were injured, and some died. And understand, the former president has been indicted and impeached for exactly that reason. But this is not an isolated situation. Let's remember Charlottesville, where there was a mob of people carrying tiki torches, spewing anti-Semitic hate. And what did the president then at the time say? There were fine people on each side. That's literally all she had. These tired, tired old tropes, this old anti-Trump rhetoric that everyone's already heard before and isn't going to change anyone's mind. And the fact that she was able to uh, just fire off these anti-Trump talking points in a way that made her seem like she's not a complete wreck inside is what gave the media the justification to say that she won this debate. That's it. Even Snopes, who is notoriously unfair, still has to tell the truth about the fact that President Trump did not say that. This also is not convincing or motivating to anyone. Whose mind has been changed about this? Like, really, it, it's not, you, you've heard it before, you know? And he, he nailed her on every point. You know, they, they tried to skew things and make him look aggressive and make him look unstable and upset, whatever. But he literally said during the debate, you're already in charge. It's been four years. And not only that, we know that the president's senile. <laughs> you know, it's clearly, it's, it's not him still steering the ship. He's dropping out because in that last debate, I showed the entire country that he is senile and not fit to hold office. So you're clearly in charge. What are you doing? Let's remember that when it came to the Proud Boys, a militia, they have not been relevant in forever. The president said, the former president said, stand back and stand by. So for everyone watching who remembers what January 6th was, I say, we don't have to go back. Let's not go back. We're not going back. It's time to turn the page. And if that was a bridge too far for you, well, there is a place in our campaign for you to stand for country, to stand for our democracy, to stand for rule of law, and to end the chaos, and to end the approach that is about attacking the foundations of our democracy because you don't like the outcome. And be clear on that point. Donald Trump, the candidate, has said in this election there will be a bloodbath if this and the outcome of this election is not to his liking. Let's turn the page on this. Let's not go back. Let's chart a course for the future and not go backwards to the past. The future to what? More groceries I can't afford? Seven dollar gas? <laughs> what, do you, what do you have in store for me? Yeah, but I mean the sentiment of the general public. So for any average American who was watching this debate, they basically agree with all of his points. The issue is, and what... Kamala was really trying to play on here is there are still a lot of people who have basically been brainwashed into having TDS. You know, the majority of Americans actually support a border wall, which you would think was unthinkable. It was something that was beyond the pale. They're trying to really do the same thing because Trump is saying he's going to deport 11 million illegals. They're like, logistically, how is this even possible? That's crazy talk. They said that same thing about the border. And, um, I mean, it's like 
would have been built by now if it weren't for the interruption of the Biden administration. Um, but the fact of the matter is no one's excited for a second helping of the Biden administration. It really felt like we kind of didn't even have a president for the past four years. I mean, it was basically just the deep state running things. So, you know, that's why. But you get what I'm saying. Like, it really, we just felt kind of leaderless and like just institutions were growing more powerful and radical stuff was happening and everyone was getting poorer and everything was just worse, you know? Uh, and basically... This election depends on whether or not the machine is strong enough that they can bluff their way into a win. And they're already acting in a way that's highly desperate, too. Like, Kamala even said, she was like, I'm a gun owner, by the way. Uh, how dare you tell those lies about me? Even though literally everyone remembers at like the beginning of 2020, she was saying she wanted some sort of mandatory buyback program. Like, bro, like, what, what kind of gun do you own? woman is <laughs> I imagine she has this little pistol a pink pistol that's like bedazzled maybe has a little a, a little hello kitty sticker on it something like that that's her pistol uh she's carrying around so now she uh that means no mandatory gun buyback program because uh kamala's got her pistol and her little uh cuck vp tim waltz he's a he's a hunter he's mr big backwoods man from uh uh, up north, he's a youper, you know, he's a real, real Midwesterner, right? I'll remind you, I'll remind you that the whole shtick of the Kamala presidency has basically just been stealing everything from the Trump platform and then saying, actually, you shouldn't vote for him because he's a terrible, mean person. Like, literally, even the no tax on tips thing. You know, I don't think that's a bad policy. It's definitely not something I would have come up with, but she literally took that too, like, right? Like, that is a sign of extreme desperation. And you know why they're so desperate? And you know why this election counts? Is because if they win, they will destroy populism forever. That's what's at stake. So I'm not saying we should say that this is in the bag or rest on our laurels, but we can see what is at stake here. And we can see how the system is contorting itself to try and retain its insidious, evil, demonic control over the American people. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This has been the very brief debate review. I will catch y'all in the next one. Red Channel's out.